Video games taught me more English than I ever learned at school. Taught me more history than I ever learned at school. Said a lot of online gamers at various points. Well, the European Union seems to agree that video games can be helpful learning tools, and wants a plan to include more video games in schools. As a teacher myself, and one who partially learned a whole lot of good stuff by playing video games, this is good news. But just how helpful are video games really as teachers? It of course comes down to the game, but I find that games focusing on history aren't the likeliest to actually teach something. The Assassin's Creed series, while partially fantasy and alternative, takes place in historical time periods with actual historical people, places and events, and often come with an entire ocean of historical knowledge and information attached. The games themselves allow us to immerse ourselves into actual history, whether in ancient Greece, medieval Palestine, or Renaissance Italy. It's now even possible to take so-called Assassin's Creed Discovery Tours, special game modes within the games themselves that removes combat, and allow us to see facts and interesting parts of life and the various cultures within both Assassin's Creed Origins in Ancient Egypt, Odyssey in Ancient Greece, and Valhalla during the Viking Age in Britannia, and even the game's various religions and mythologies, down to the weapons, tools, and machinery used. But arguably a more all-encompassing type of game to learn from are strategy games. On the surface, these games might seem little more than war simulators or time sinkers, but what lies beneath are various types of knowledge in one and the same package. When I was 13 years old, I finally found Rome Total War, a game taking place during the age of the Roman Republic, the massive wars against Carthage, and those unwieldy Hellenistic powers in the East. Rome hooked me because of the premise. Play as historical peoples and states, build your kingdom as they did, and even wage wars like they did. Now of course Rome Total War isn't 100% accurate. Even though Rome itself has a senate, it doesn't exactly work like it did in history, and the complexity of the other factions are not really accounted for. Battles in these games, while large and fun to play, are much smaller than in real life, and definitely much more sanitized. But what Rome Total War did teach me was everything around the inaccuracies. It taught me about various types of Roman soldiers and the hierarchy between them, about military reforms like the Marian Reform, which changed the entire army and therefore the empire, about the actual nations that existed, and this is where not just the niche history knowledge comes in, but arguably political science and geography as well. Rome showed me how different our world was back in the day. There was no Italian, no Greek, and certainly no Tunisian or Syrian states. But we have the Seleucid Empire, the Greek city-states, a lone Sparta, all of them either Macedonian or Greek in terms of culture, ruling almost the entirety of the Middle East and various tribes all over the world. More than that, I was taught the names of ancient cities and their locations relative to the ones I already knew. The same pattern continued throughout the later games, whether we're talking the medieval period, the age of imperialism, or the Napoleonic Wars themselves. Total War served as a fantastic gateway to love of history, political science, and geography. And even though it couldn't teach me everything, and sometimes even took some great liberties, yes, I am looking at you from Total War Egypt, it made history as a subject that much more fun to learn at school itself. Of course, Total War can only do so much, and that's where the grandfather of historical immersion comes in, Paradox Games. Being much more complex than Total War, Paradox Games are grand strategy games where virtually every aspect of state must be managed. But for the purposes of teaching, we also have several other benefits here. Our world is not just sectioned into states, but into much smaller segments of territory, to the point where we can easily define various parts of countries. For the more historical aspect, I find the Crusader Kings series and Victoria 3 in particular to be very useful. Crusader Kings teaches us that states were not always compact and the end all as many are today, but that they actually consisted of several layers of people and even quasi states within states. Kings did not have ultimate power, but were reliant on their council members and vassals for that power, and their relationships were determined by a number of personal reasons laws, and agreements. For most people though, the power of kings and emperors are likely synonymous with the power of the absolute monarchs of the 18th century, not the medieval feudal system which is what most people actually think of when they imagine kings. This is just one part of the benefits, and we of course have things like the unique viking traditions of raising runestones to the forefathers, and that kings often needed to hold court to be considered good and just rulers, or even how the Iberian Peninsula had unique challenges related to religion. Even though a whole lot is possible in Crusader Kings that never would have passed for history then, it's all wrapped up in a blanket of history, where much is possible to learn and to take with you into actual history class. 
Jumping a thousand years forward in time, Victoria III does something similar, but slightly different. Once again, we have kings and queens, and even though they have certain powers, they are tied up not just by laws, but by interest groups, powerful people within the country who have their own agendas. While there are many things you can do in Victoria III which a government probably would not meddle in, this example perfectly encapsulates why the Ottoman Empire had such a hard time reforming, why the United States couldn't just abolish slavery without consequence, and why the Japanese remained isolated for so long. It's not because of one man, but because of the powerful people and interest groups within those countries, over time, that kept reform away. History has for a long time been the domain of great men, meaning powerful figures, from Cleopatra to JFK. And even though strategy games often is a matter of great leaders and their accomplishments, they also show us how the people influence history themselves. The Thirty Years' War in European Results 4 does not happen just because the Holy Roman Emperor decides to fight a war. It happens because enough normal people all over Europe suddenly challenges the Catholic Church and its dominance, which in turn forces the dukes, kings, and emperors to choose sides. In the same vein, societies can't be upended by the stroke of a pen in Victoria III simply because the king says so. The current laws and demographic makeups change just the power of each interest group and political parties, which in turn may come to demand changes from those in power. There are still downsides to relying solely on video games for accurate historical knowledge. As with any product, games only show you what the developer either want or have the capacity to make, or even what makes for fun gameplay. This is especially evident in a game like Battlefield 1, where the gameplay is absolutely fantastic, and it remains actually one of the only AAA World War I games we have. And yet, it takes many liberties in terms of what actually happened, or how the war was fought. In reality, Battlefield 1 is much more akin to World War II in all ways but the visuals, but it still gives that feel of World War I, and might even encourage people to become interested in that time period, in the empires that existed, and why they fought in the first place. And that is the real value of the place of video games in history, I find. For even though they'll never be as accurate nor as detailed as proper history books, they can inspire interest and love of learning. Maybe you find some interesting piece of knowledge in a game that makes you want to learn more. Maybe you saw a city name in a Roman era game, or know the location of a particular resource, or who ruled the Kingdom of France in 1066, and now you can actually answer those questions when the teacher asks and even add other pieces of knowledge to the class. Games taking place in history certainly help to inspire my intense love for the subject, and I know I'm not alone. Just remember to read those history books as well, or else you might end up like Rome Total War thinking there actually were red, green, and blue Roman countries. And that would not be very historian of you. Cheers.